In the mid-1980s, as the Cold War reached its climax, the United States and the Soviet Union competed against each other not only in nuclear and space weapons, but also in high-speed reconnaissance aircraft. During these tense times, rumors began to surface more and more often about a secret U.S. project, the SR-91 Aurora, a hypersonic aircraft capable of reaching speeds exceeding all known technologies at that time. So did this mysterious plane really exist? And what was its ultimate fate? Let's figure it all out in today's video. On the evening of September 26, 1994, a mysterious aircraft was preparing to take off from runway 23 at RAF Boscombe Down, a Royal Air Force base in Wiltshire, England, where the British services have long conducted flight tests and testing of new weapons. As the plane was making its run along the runway, it developed a malfunction, due to which the crew was forced to urgently abort the takeoff. Almost instantly, the London Air Traffic Control Center LATCC, received a call demanding that the entire runway be closed and the aircraft and all its debris were quickly packed away, cordoning off the area from prying eyes. Everything looked like a typical cleanup operation from some TV series about special services. Two helicopters arrived at the base, an Augusta A-109 from No. 8 Squadron Army Air Corps AAC, a unit that provides covert transport for Special Air Service SAS, personnel, and a Boeing CH-47 Chinook from No. 7 Squadron Royal Air Force, responsible for supporting British Special Forces. The stricken aircraft was covered with the frame and tarpaulin and ambulances surrounded the scene. Its rear end was unnaturally raised, leading to speculation that the nose landing gear had failed. The plane was hastily dragged to the hangar where it stood for several days, after which a U.S. Air Force Lockheed C-5 Galaxy transport plane arrived at the base late in the evening and took the mysterious aircraft, or what was left of it, home. Despite all the efforts of the British and American authorities and the military, some eyewitnesses still shared information about what happened. Shortly before the incident, on September 22nd, residents heard an abnormal noise approaching the base. Local news reports joined their testimony, reporting sounds resembling a loud freight train. Other sources mentioned something like a low-frequency rumble or hum. While transporting the damaged aircraft, Eyewitnesses caught a glimpse of a partially covered charcoal gray aircraft with inward canted twin tail fins and featured chines extending from its nose section, not too dissimilar from these found on the SR-71, or the characteristics we see on stealthy aircraft designs, such as the YF-23 from the Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF program. In 1997, the British aviation magazine Air Forces Monthly published a report mentioning the accident with the mysterious aircraft, reporting that, in addition to the C-5 Galaxy, two more American aircraft had been seen. U.S. Air Force Beechcraft C-12 Huron, used by the Department of Defense for priority airlift throughout Europe, and an unmarked Boeing 707 landed at Exeter Airport 80 miles from Boscombe Down. The destination of the C-5, which was transporting the mysterious device, turned out to be a USAF Plant 42 airport, familiar to many aviation enthusiasts, the home nest of the Skunk Works division of Lockheed Martin, as well as the Northrop and Boeing teams responsible for the implementation of the most secret and ambitious American aircraft. The magazine called the crashed aircraft Astra, Advanced Stealth Reconnaissance Aircraft, saying that Northrop was most likely responsible for its development. This guess was further confirmed by the fact that within a couple of weeks after the incident, a C-20 Gulfstream IV belonging to the CIA arrived at RAF Boscombe Down Air Base. Moreover, in addition to Boscombe Down, it made several stops throughout England, including Southampton, where Northrop Grumman facilities were located. The U.S. and British Departments of Defense, of course, unanimously denied the accident. There was also no response to the journalistic investigation involving the mysterious Astra aircraft, which lasted for several years. One way or another, almost all such investigations surrounding the mysterious Astra, Aurora, or SR-91 aircraft go back to a declassified Pentagon document from the 1986-87 fiscal year, with reference to a multi-billion dollar black program to create stealth aircraft. According to the document, $80 million was allocated for it in 1986 and another $2.3 billion in 1987. 
This was suspicious not only because of the impressive figure of appropriations, but also because such black programs, and even more so spending on them, were never advertised by the services in financial documents. In parallel, the U.S. Air Force planned to spend between $900 million and $1 billion from 1985 to 1988 on Northrop Stealth Bomber, better known today as the B-2 Spirit. One of the sources of the Los Angeles Times, which devoted a separate article in 1985 to Aurora and the strange financial statements of the Pentagon, reported suspicious activity by Lockheed at Palmdale at Air Force Plant 42. According to him, every morning a plane with workers was sent to the secret facility, the windows of which were tightly sealed so that no one knew exactly where they were going. Interestingly enough, Ben Rich, former director of Lockheed Corporation and Skunk Works, stated that Aurora was only a code name for the B-2 Spirit, denying the existence of the mysterious hypersonic aircraft SR-91. Although the designation SR-91 also didn't just appear out of thin air, by the end of the 80s, aerospace industry experts were confident that the United States had the necessary technological base to create a worthy replacement for the legendary Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. One of the designated options for the future aircraft was precisely this SR-91. Only unlike its ancestor, its speed would not be limited to Mach 3.2, being more like Mach 5 to 6 or even more, and its altitude ceiling would increase from 85,000 feet to an insane 200,000 feet. In the early 90s, Aurora made its presence felt again. In the summer of 89, Petroleum engineer Chris Gibson, working on the jackup barge GSF Galveston Key in the North Sea, saw an unusual aircraft in the shape of a perfect triangle, which was refueled in midair from a Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker and was flying accompanied by a pair of General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark fighter bombers. Since Gibson was not just an aviation fan, but a trained airfield observer adept at identifying aircraft from a distance, he hastened to make a sketch based on what he saw, and then compared the silhouette of an unknown aircraft with airplanes in one of the best reference books of the time, the Swedish Observer's Book of Aircraft. However, what he saw didn't even remotely resemble any of the planes from the book. Soon, residents of several British cities and California began to increasingly report loud sonic booms and strange contrails in the sky appearing behind an unknown aircraft using some exotic form of propulsion. The year 1991 saw a boom in reports regarding a series of unusual sonic booms in Southern California. They were even registered by the local U.S. Geological Survey, which records earthquakes. Geologists said the sonic booms were characteristic of a small craft rather than the 121-foot space shuttle or SR-71 Blackbird that had previously been tested in the area. Moreover, the strikes were repeated for some time strictly on Thursdays between 4 and 7 a.m. One of NASA's sonic boom experts, Tom Maglieri, who studied this data, concluded that the unknown aircraft was flying at an altitude of 90,000 feet at a speed somewhere between Mach 4 and Mach 5.2. In 1992, near Amarillo, Texas, journalist Stephen Douglas managed to again capture the same unusual contrail that resembled donuts on a string, something that had previously been seen in the UK and California. A couple of minutes before the photo was taken, he heard a loud, pulsating roar so deep that it shook the house and made the window shake. According to Douglas, the roar of the engine in this mysterious device was felt more in the chest than in the ears and was unlike anything from either airplanes or rockets. In the autumn of 1993, Group Captain Tom Ailes, RAF, mentioned an unknown aircraft flying quickly over his house near Mildenhall USAF base in Suffolk at about 2 a.m. He was awakened by a loud, pulsating engine noise, completely unlike anything Ailes had heard before. After this, he saw lights heading toward Mildenhall. And guess what? This took place just a couple weeks after the Boscombe Down incident. The following morning, Ailes made inquiries about the incident to a senior RAF officer at Mildenhall, after which he was ordered to stop making inquiries immediately. Almost 10 years passed after the 1997 British Air Force's monthly article when in May of 2006, the British Ministry of Defense invited the U.S. Air Force to begin a joint project to create a hypersonic aircraft. Many rightly assumed that we could be talking about the development of that same Aurora originally from the 90s, and by 2007, DARPA and the U.S. Air Force signed a Memorandum of Understanding MOU, 
to develop the unmanned reusable hypersonic aircraft Black Swift, also known as the HTV-3X. They plan to equip the demonstrator with a combination of turbine engine and ramjet, an all-in-one engine, expecting that the first would accelerate the device to Mach 3, after which the ramjet would come into play and bring it home, all the way to Mach 6. By the way, the idea of a combined cycle engine is not only a live one, but even today, it's jumping from one high-tech startup developing hypersonic aircraft to another. Just take a look at Ermius with their own Chimera engine. And although the Black Swift concept was part of the ambitious DARPA Force application and launch from Continental United States Falcon project, it didn't receive the necessary funding in the 2009 fiscal year budget, and the project was canceled soon after. But in 2007, when data about the MOU between DARPA and the U.S. Air Force appeared, the first bit of information also leaked to the media about a certain future aircraft from Lockheed capable of flying at a speed of Mach 6, and the development of this unique device was entrusted to the Skunk Works division. We're talking about the son of Blackbird, SR-72. And we've come full circle. We started at Plant 42 in Palmdale, and it's there that we end our journey. Indeed, in March of 2016, Lockheed Martin CEO Marilyn Hewson confirmed that the SR-72 would be in development at least until the 2020s, and its maximum speed would indeed exceed Mach 6. She also emphasized that hypersonic technology had finally matured, and the first prototype of the SR-72 would take off in 2025. So, what if the project, which originated on the sidelines of Plant 42 and went through fire, water, and copper pipes for almost three decades, was simply waiting for its finest hour, changing the nickname Aurora or SR-91 to the more official one, SR-72? Perhaps everyone will find their own answer to this question. What do you think? Was the son of Blackbird that same mysterious plane that frightened the public with its hellish roar back in the 1990s? Share your guesses in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.